Hey guys, on uh, today's episode, we uh, finish up the bead rollers, planishing hammer, you know, make everything work here, uh, get it all ready for me to take it home in a couple of days, um, take advantage of the shop. Uh, we'll walk through all this coming up real quick here, but uh, do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, Click the button, subscribe. It's free, I swear. It's the beauty of YouTube. Um, but it helps me out here. If you picked up any pointers, anything useful here, uh, like the video, drop a comment, do the whole YouTube thing. And uh, let me show you how we went from the video other day to this here before I take them home. Well, you better believe we got up, got straight at it this morning. The other side's all welded out. This side's about two-thirds the way welded out. I don't even know if I'm going to blend out these welds. I kind of like it. So uh, we're going to finish welding this. I've got the shafts all ready to go as soon as I am. Once we get the shafts in, I can deal with my adjuster. And uh, this one is almost good to go. Then we got the other one to do. Hoping by the end of today, my day, not the video today, that uh, we got both of these bead rollers ready to go on stands, good to go. And uh, we can finish up some other stuff. First one welded up. Second one going together. So one of the biggest things I wanted for this was uh, repairability and I wanted the ability to disassemble it. Um, so what we've got here is a piece of uh, inch and a half, one eighth wall DOM, which fits the oil impregnated bronze bushing. It's sitting inside a piece of two by two quarter wall box tube. Cut the side with the seam off and just welded the length here. Welded a nut to either side here. This is just to keep it aligned. And it's got a piece of half inch thread here. Now, up top, we've got this saddle. This is about three-eighths of an inch gap here. So, there's a nut welded inside a piece of quarter-inch plate. That's all welded to the sleeve from a bushing. It's uh, three-quarter inch OD, half-inch ID. That's got a handle welded to it. And, uh, yeah. I'll put a fancy spinny handle up here at some point, but basically with the shaft out, this actually will drop right out the bottom. And you just slide that in there, lift that up a little bit, that'll thread right in. And uh, if I ever got to take it apart, I can service it. These don't basically stop it from sliding backwards. Um, they limit the up and down travel a little bit and there's still a shaft collar to go here and then the gears on the back end will hold it all together But uh, sure makes for a really clean adjuster So the welding's pretty much done. We're gonna, uh, Dustin wants to TIG weld some sleeves in here and we're gonna TIG weld the gears on. There's no reason to leave these so they can come off and I'll adjust the shaft. The bottom one is gonna get a flat spot so that I can put a handle on it for now. But uh, down the road, it's gonna be power. I haven't quite worked it out yet. I wanna work something out a little bit different than like the Eastwood option. Um, I got a few ideas, but that's going to come. For now, it'll be a two-person job, big handle. I get uh, my wife or kid to spin it. But uh, this thing is huge. It's actually, uh, the frame itself is a 36-inch throat. From the bead in is a hair over 40 inches. So there is a ton of room on this thing. It's not light by any means. And, uh, uh it's pretty beefy. Overall, I'm super happy with how it's coming out. Um, I need to get a stand on it to take it home. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet, but 
it's getting late tonight so tomorrow we'll be back out in the shop and finish it up got dustin's going together too um this is most of the way welded kind of working out the process the idea here is to be able to offer this as a builder kit to people all of the plates the shafts the adjuster everything ready to go and uh people can assemble it at home or we can assemble it down here um, learned a couple of things putting mine together uh, this time we decided that we're going to weld out the whole thing before we put the end plates on and on his we actually welded this down like this we welded mine kind of quick i'm on a short timeline and uh, it spread a little bit um, it's not going to affect the function on mine at all it just it wasn't perfect so we're kind of dialing in the process but uh, his is going to be ready to go before i leave too and uh, the cool thing is we can uh, get this bdf logo in there Mine's got my old shop logo on it. My shop uh, lives on one way or another. But uh, cool thing about the plasma table, we can put those little details in whatever we want. And just to put it in perspective, I wish I had done this with the English wheel before I took it home. But uh, this is the generic offshore bead roller that everyone sells that, you know, has to be beefed up, braced, you name it, 18 inch throat or so, compared to my design. So uh, if you're having a hard time gauging scale of this thing, there you go. I spun up a piece on the lathe out of some solid stock, bored it out 7 eighths of an inch, have a through hole at the bottom. This is uh, Take the lower planishing hammer dies, and I'll just drop in. These are a hair undersized from 7 eighths on purpose, the whole 7 eighths, so they're not gonna get jammed, but the bracket that'll bolt this to my lure tool post, I'm gonna put a hole in it so that worst case, I can unbolt it and I can punch a die out if something goes horribly wrong. Basically just make it user friendly. Um, might taper that off a little bit more, but this just needs to be welded down to a plate and uh, I can start finishing up the mount for the upper end. So with my air hammer, you've seen the body, there was a screw in the bottom of it. I cut a plate that is the exact same bolt pattern as my upper anvil holder. It's got a hole in the middle that is threaded to that. I got a second plate that clears this body here and it'll bolt together. These two pieces will sandwich together. They won't be bolted though, or they won't be welded though. I've got a piece of tube with two-thirds of a donut welded to it my pinch collar because then what i can do is take this piece here force that down there that will keep all of that true that's touching at the bottom or basically touching here and now that that's there my fitting will enter out the side i have my pinch bolt here i've still got room for my spring up top i can Give that a, a bit of a stitch. I'm going to stitch this bottom, take it all apart and weld it out. And for the lower end, we have this piece that I made that is going on a plate that matches the lower anvil bolt pattern. And then my lower dies go in here. This will bolt to the upper. We've already got the air hammer bits. We've got the pedal. My flow adjuster can go right here for pressure and speed and uh, just needs a little bit of welding now. Now if you just picture this, bolted into my English wheel frame, there is my planishing hammer. Um, everything's all assembled, welded, pinch bolt works. That's still a nice tight fit. Keeps everything straight. That's all ready to go and I can just swap out my lower anvils. And then obviously with my English wheel, I have the ability to lift this up and down and adjust that and uh, my dial on the side so I can adjust my speed and pressure. But uh, this is going straight into the bag and then uh, I'll probably bolt it up as soon as I get home and grab some airlines.
Well, it was pretty low tech. Just had the ratchet on the uh, bolt that's threaded into the shaft. So that he had uh, basically a rotary table. Spun it around while he welded it. We're both really rusty. We both got TIGs, but it's his shop. He can weld it. But uh, yeah, spin that. And it does its job. Doesn't feel like it's binding anywhere. I can lift it up a fair ways and it'll still rotate. Everything's pretty tight. Like it wasn't built to be sloppy by any means. There's no slop between these, which is what I wanted. But uh, yeah, this feels good. So couldn't just leave that hand alone. Not when we got a lathe sitting here. So I made this. And uh, it's just out of a piece of brass. Spun it on the lathe quick. You can see it spins nice. I'm just slam a nut on it. Or you could machine a nut end cap that threads down tight to the bolt. And it don't get much cleaner than that. Since I was in the shop anyways, the uh, bit that I had for the planishing hammer, I didn't like the tooling marks that were on here, casting marks or whatever, and it was actually domed quite a bit. So I put it on the lathe and I took out all the marks, I flattened it out and I polished it up pretty good. And then I took all of the lower anvils and uh, I got rid of the sharp edge. Not much, just radiused it over. It was a little bit sharper than I liked. I mean, I, tough to go wrong. They're tool steel and, you know, the three pack was 30 bucks, which I'm not even sure I can buy the tool steel for that right now. But they're all ready to go. And uh, my bead roller is pretty much ready to go, except for a handle or something. Um, I got an add a flat spot right here. Uh, not sure quite what I'll do. I might do something similar to what I've got on my English wheel. Just put a hub there and build something until I put a power drive on it. But uh, we built his bead roller as well. Ran out yesterday and uh, got this 22 inch stainless sailboat wheel. Great thing about being on an island is there's boats everywhere. So I may actually hit up the guys at home, see if I can find one of these two. It's a nice big wheel. It's too far to reach if you're working at one end. So it'd be a two person job. Luckily, I got the wife and kids at home to help me spin it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely cool to see all of it become a reality. Well, since we're down here, started cutting this intake manifold. Social media is great. There's been a couple of guys that said, I'll never build it, it'll never happen. Well, if you happen to see this video, Believe me, it's happening. Well, just getting ready to pack up and leave, but one of the last things we did was make sure that we've both got tables for these things, and they're huge. I'm just gonna hit it with the random orbital when I get home, and uh, build a base for this, and it's pretty much ready to put to work. Well, this trip could have been a uh, episode of Roadkill, Secondaries on the carve are plugged up solid. It's barely ran in five years and it's still getting five miles to the gallon. But uh, at least the view's nice. Oh, yeah, and the wipers and the squirters aren't working. So uh, we get my dirty with a rag washed windshield. But man, I love the view. Oh, that was one heck of a drive. It's uh, it's a late trip. Took me about twice as long to come home as I wanted, but uh, got my motor home here. I uh, had a long enough drive on the way home to consider LS swapping it. Maybe a four-wheel drive front clip. I don't know. Needs a little something, but uh, my English wheels home. I uh, get it on a stand, get it all set up, and put it to work right away. I got all kinds of panels for this thing I need to build. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's late. You know, the first panel that gets rolled out of this thing is going to have to wait for another video. Um, so for tonight, this is where I'm going to leave it all. If you enjoyed the video, you picked up any hints, tips, tricks, or purely enjoyed my company for a few minutes, do me a favor, like the video. If you haven't yet, subscribe. And uh, drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. Do the whole YouTube thing. And... Uh, yeah, after a long couple of days, I'm packing it in, but I'll see you on the next one.